Hi, good evening. Hello, good evening. Can you hear me well? Good evening. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, no, yes, I can hear you. Currently, the connection today is better for me. What about what about you? Do you have good connection? Good internet connection? I have good connection, but I'm going to dinner right now. Okay. Enjoy it. Hopefully you. Thank you. Yeah, you can eat uh, a little bit and check. Jackie, how about you? Oh my goodness, Karen, you're driving? Yes. <laughs> okay, be careful, please. Okay. <laughs> Hi, teacher. Me? All is okay. What? Jackie, you are on vacation, you said. No, no, no. I'm okay. I'm going to turn on my camera in some minutes. I'm going to finish my dinner. Oh, okay. Got it. Bon appetit. <laughs> Thank you. For my headphones because I think somebody took them from my desk. And Mariela? How about Good you? Evening. Good evening. Um, fine, a little sick. Yeah. Uh, I have a head. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I think I'm mm, getting a grip. You're getting the flu. Yes. I think I'm getting the flu. I think I'm getting the flu. Okay, okay. I hope I hope it's just a false alarm and it's not that. Maybe for the rain. Yeah. Hopefully it's just an allergy. Or an allergic reaction, right? Uh, to the weather, to the rain. Yes, I think so. I think I have to use an, another pair of headphones because uh, I don't have them here on my desk. If I have another good pair of headphones. Hey, Floor, welcome, and Janari as well. Good evening. Floor and Janari, can you hear me? Yes, teacher, good evening. And you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Okay. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Can you hear me well, Francisco? Yes, teacher. Okay, yes, so I it can. works. I found an ear an earbud. <laughs> so I will use that. Uh, yes. I think my nephew took my headphones from my desk. Okay. Um, New yeah. podcast or or what? como se dice? How do you say what? Podcast. No. Podcast. Yes. No. What do you mean? Um, for example, uh, a new accessories. Accessories. Yes. I'm not sure. Juan Jose, Freddy's, welcome. How's it going, guys? How are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm fine today. Fine. 
Okay, that's good. That's good to hear. Um, let me check. I'm trying to see if I, everyone can hear me well. So, Get the computer charges. With the computer, Freddy. Nothing, nothing. I'll put a charge. Ah, okay, okay. So you need some charge. Got it. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, taking the attendance, right, to see who's here right now. And after that, I'm going to introduce to you what we're going to be doing today. So, um, Ana Beatriz is not here yet or anything. It's strange because it's usually on time. So, we'll continue with the next one. That is Elizabeth. Hi, teacher. I'm here. Oh, welcome. And let me see who's next. Mariela. Thank you. Brenda. Not here at the moment, Carla. Uh, Diana. What's the matter with my students today? They are. The classmate is absent. There are many of them that are absent. That's not common. I wonder why. I wonder how. Good evening, Salema and Jennifer. Hi, teacher. Hi, girls. Hi, teacher. Good evening, okay. everyone. Good evening. Good to have you here. Welcome. Um, so I'm going to continue with Floor. Francisco. Present. Laura. Marvin. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Present. Hello. Good evening. Uh, we'll continue with well, Jennifer. She just joined us right now. That's I'm here. Great. Juan Jose. Karen. Present. She's driving. Okay. Thank Hi, you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Maritza. Not here yet. Uh, then we have uh, Marlene. She's not here. Uh, Miguel Angel, is Miguel here? Not yet. Okay, so we continue with the next one. And the next one is Rolando, Ruth, Suleyma. I'm here. Yanari. I'm here. Jackie. I'm here. Excellent. Laka. I'm here. Redis. I'm here, teacher. Okay, so welcome to the session number 19, guys. Um, today we have a, some, some uh, let's say, new topics. Probably is it going to be a, a really new topic for you by the end of the session. And there's a little uh, surprise as well, okay? So, uh, because it's Thursday and it's a special Thursday. Now, we're going to get started with what we did yesterday. What do you remember from yesterday's class? What did we do? What did we study? What did we practice? We studied superlative, what, superlative what? Superlative verbs, superlative nouns, superlative adjectives, superlative adjectives. And as you know, the adjectives are the words that we use to. What is the purpose of the objective of the adjectives? The most. To compare more more than two you say persons beautiful, or things in a intelligent, tall, short. Heavy, light, dark. To describe. To describe. To describe. Okay. To describe characteristics. Okay.
okay? External or internal characteristics, okay? It can be personality, it can be physical appearance, okay? So that's what we did yesterday. Now, in order to refresh your mind, in order to refresh your mind about adjectives, I would like you to tell me some adjectives that you know that refer to the physical appearance, okay? Adjectives that we can use to describe something or to describe someone, okay? Not only person, but also uh, things. For example, I can say that this cup right here is hard, okay? That's a physical uh, description, right? It's hard and it's a little big. It's a little big, okay? More than usual, right? The normal size. So it's big, it's hard, it's uh, round at the top, it's round, and uh, the color, right? It's kind of aqua, I think, color. So uh, those are physical characteristics. Can you tell me more, please? Physical adjectives for, adjectives for describing physical uh, aspects. For people or for things or for animals? Tall. Tall. Um, Tall, yes. Material. For things. For things. Material. Material. Yes. For a physical description, material. Um, Example, a table could be of metal or wood. Ah, okay. Wooden, you can say metal. Uh -huh, very good. Those are adjectives to describe. Some one are made of glass. Plastic. Some uh -huh. Plastic or glass on the yeah. top. That's correct. So plastic is another adjective. Okay, so some materials can be described, okay? It can be used as adjectives. Okay, what about people? If you describe people, what adjectives Small can you use? or high? Small. The opposite of tall is short. Very good. Or small, small or short. It's short. No, it's short. Okay. For for it's the short. height, we say for people we say tall and short. Uh, if you say about animals or fat. things, we use uh, big or small. A uh, thing or fat. Short. Okay. Fat. Or heavy, right? That's another word because fat can be offensive for people in English. So saying fat, smart person. Fat, I am fat is not really good. They usually use Chubby. heavy or they say shabby. Uh, uh, Carly and Brunette. A little. Ah, okay. Carly, okay, when you have curls like, like Shakira, right? Uh, hair is, cur is curly, uh, very good. Like David Bisbal, right? Or Carles Puyol, that's curly. Or Valderrama, if you like soccer. So, uh, very good. Uh, straight. Straight. You were talking about the, the hair, right? You have- The hair, Rocho, yeah. Liso, uh -huh. uh, How do you say when it's like, like puntudo or like it looks like Johnny Bravo? Or It's curly. It's, <laughs> it's spiky. Uh, spiky hair, spiky hair. That's correct, spiky hair. The rock star, right? Spiky hair. Okay, good. Spiky, yeah. So you see, what about what about for the, the skin color? The skin color. What adjectives can we use for the skin color? White. Tan. White. Brunette. Tan. Brunette. Yes. <laughs> I hear a, a noise like. Uh, if you were in in a um, car, maybe it's oh, a I think song. I think it was I Karen, but song. I already muted her mic. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Karen uh, because she was driving. But now I see that she's getting home. Now we know where Karen lives. Now we're going to move on. We uh, all know Karen. where where Karen where Karen lives. <laughs> She's a celebrity, okay, that's why. Now we're going to continue with uh, more description, more adjectives. Uh, so, 
about the skin, yeah, you can say brown or dark skin uh, because for a lot of people and because of this uh, situation, right, going on around the world about racism, uh, using black as a description is not, is, is, can be very offensive. So you can say dark skin or you can say brown skin. That's That would be more uh, recommendable. Yeah. Of course, of course, people who have that kind of color, they can use that word with no problem and they can probably uh, call like that with their, I mean, among their friends, right? Uh, they show their niggers. <laughs> so they, they, they don't have any problems on using different kinds of words, okay? That for, from other people who have a different kind of color, skin color, can be offensive, right? If they use those words. Now, let's go on, let's continue. Uh, we have the uh, other descriptions, for example, when you say beautiful, when you say handsome, when you say attractive, good looking, not so good looking, when you say ugly, when you say gorgeous, when you say, uh, I don't know, there are many, many other, uh, what? Hot. Be sexy when you're described. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say that you can describe the weather, but you're talking about people, right? So, uh, you can describe the weather. The weather is fresh, it's cold, it's cool, it's hot, it's warm, it's mild. That would be templado, mild, M I L D. Um, so you can describe many things, many things, right? Uh, and then we have adjectives to describe uh, personality, right? Internal characteristics of someone. So for example, you say- Friendly. Intelligent, friendly, uh -huh, another one. Lovely. Okay. Lovely, correct. Shy. Shy, very good. Clever. Ever. Selfish. Selfish. Yes, is the opposite of Sad. generous, right? Sad. Okay, speaking of uh, emotions, speaking of emotions and feelings, right? I am happy, I am sad. You remember the emojis from yesterday, right? I'm going to share that with you one more time so you can this you can give the name to the to the emojis. Okay, for so the weather, uh, you can you can use for the weather you can use uh, sunny. Sunny, yeah, sunny, rainy, cloudy, foggy. Uh, yeah, there are many, many other uh, adjectives that we could use. So let's go on. I'm going to share the emoji so you can probably remember some some feelings. Uh, so you say happy. Uh, what about the, the emoji number four? Nervous. Ah, the four. In love. Lovely. In love. For this. In love. In love. <laughs> In love. Okay, what about this one? Crazy. Crazy. Okay, I'm going to use the, the arrow for this. So this one is crazy. This one? Amazed. Amazed, like wow, right? Or probably is uh, excited about something. And what about, let me see one more, this one. Curious. Could be curious, uh -huh. could be pensive, right, pensive. Um, uh, what about this one? Hmm. Serious, maybe. Okay. Serious, maybe, when you say that I'm going to watch Henry Cavill. Okay, so you're, you're feeling like uh, intrigued, right? Like, hmm, I like that idea. Okay, uh, then it's like the kid in the oxo. Mm. 
Exactly. Like. Uh, what about this one? If I, if I tell you, for example, we are going to have a party and the party is a quiz. You are like, seriously, teacher? Sorry? <laughs> yeah, it was... Kind of, kind of angry, right? So it's kind of angry or disappointed, like... Sarcastic. <laughs> uh, no. Sarcastic? He's got no. no not... Probably sarcastic can be, the, can be the previous one, right? The previous one can be sarcastic. Uh, what about this one? What is this feeling? What is this? Relaxing. Relaxing. Relax. Yeah. Okay. Uh, relax. That would be the, the best description, probably. Uh, this one? Cool. 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 Okay, cool. And this one? How can I about, say travieso? Food, for example? Delicious. Delicious. Delicious, if you're describing food, right? If you're describing the person, the feeling is hungry, right? I feel hungry. Uh, so that's just to give you an idea, right? So this one, you said sad, right? Sad. Uh, so yes. all these ones are sad. But this one is more than sad, I think. In the mood, <laughs> I think that that is worried. Worried, worried, uh, worried. I think it's more like this one worried, like, it's worried. More or disappointed. Worried. Disappointed that would be a good description for this one, right? Disappointed. And this one, hmm? what we have a test today? You didn't say that. Are you serious? <laughs> serious or like surprised, but not in a positive way, right? Like, what? Really? So, good. So, we see, we. Huh? It's too similar. It's like to when I say seriously. Uh huh. Yeah. What about this one? Shy. If somebody, if somebody tells, yeah, you feel shy, right? You feel a little shy, but. It's like when you receive a compliment, Lush. right? Like somebody, you feel blushed. Uh, you feel, uh, I don't know. Uh, somebody tells you, hey, you're so intelligent or you're so beautiful. You're so handsome. And you are like, thank you. But you don't thank know what to say, you. right? Uh, thankful. It could be thankful, but maybe think, yeah, thankful can be another reaction. Also, this one can be for thankful, like, nice. Uh, so let's move on, okay? I'm just... Uh, give you an example, right? That, there are many adjectives, many adjectives that we can use uh, to talk about the appearance, the, the characteristics of something or someone, uh, for the internal part, the feelings, right? Uh, for example, uh, if you're talking about animals, you have to describe an animal. How would you describe a dog, for example? What adjectives come to your mind when you think about a dog? Friendly. <laughs> uh, friendly, loyal. Big. It can be big or it can be small. Right? There are many sizes. Funny. Funny. Can be funny uh, too. Yeah, very uh, creative or inventive, right? Like uh, Aggressive. It could be aggressive. It could be aggressive, yes. And what about... How can cat? I say travieso? How do you say travieso? That's a good question. Yeah. How can you say I love travieso? Because dogs are... Especially when, in the first year. <laughs> the first year, they are like that. Uh-huh. Who knows the word? There are, different, there are different words that you can use for that. Naughty. Naughty, naughty uh, can be, it's a naughty. Uh, however, naughty can be used in different contexts, okay? Uh, like, for example, uh, naughty is like, I don't know, this Aventura music has like a double <laughs> message. So that's like a naughty. Um, 
message in there. Uh, so naughty or mischievous, right? That's another one. It's not mischievous. Okay, don't don't get me wrong. That's not that's not a pronunciation, right? So uh, it's not as common as naughty, but uh, for example, uh, well, I think I better write it on the chat. I will write it down in the chat so you can see the word. Playful. Okay, playful. That would be, yeah, like with dog. Very good. What about the cats? The cats are a little bit different to the dogs. So, Miss, Miss Chivas. Angry. Angry? She's Could be. Sleepy. Sleepy. They are very sleepy, yeah. Playful. Playful. Lazy, lazy. Lovely. Some of them are, uh, yeah, they, they are lovely, but they are not very loving. That's the difference between lovely and loving. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Lovely is like, oh wow, they are so so cute. So it's just the appearance that you feel mm -hmm. that they, it's so lovely, right? But when they are very, uh, let's say. Uh, close to you and they start to lick you or to caress your hand, right? Or something like that, or they want to be with you. So in that moment you say like, oh, she's or he's so loving, right? Loving. So adorable is one thing and amoroso or cariñoso is another one, right? So some people are lovely, but then so loving, okay? Good. And um, I think the cats can be very mischievous um, compared conceited. to the dogs. Conceited. Conceited or a little arrogant. They are right? independent. They are very the independent. The human are. Very good. <laughs> the human okay. are slaves. The humans are the slaves. That's right. In my case, I, I am in trouble. I have one cat and one dog. So I experienced two different know emotions or reactions right from them so um, the two types of love the two types of love me too exactly. i have both dog and cat okay, okay. cool so uh, let's move on hopefully one day we're going to be talking about them a little bit okay or the reason why you don't like them so much because some people don't like them for different reasons Okay, so I'm going to move on and welcome to the rest of the people who already joined us in today's session. So we already talked about yesterday's session and we already reviewed a little bit of vocabulary related to adjectives. So uh, we're going to, I'm going to share the screen with you for the session 19, how to make the perfect form. Okay, so uh, let me see. When it comes to perfect form, don't think that it's too complicated. It's just a matter of practice as we did yesterday with this curlet, right? So uh, in a moment, we're going to see a little bit more about that in case you have more doubts about the superlatives, uh, superlative adjectives. But today we're going to get started with the conversation questions. So the question for you or the topic for you is experiences. And the question that you're going to use in the majority of the questions that you will be asking your classmates is, have you ever blah, 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 blah. So that's normally the tense that we use when we are talking about experiences. For example, if I ask you the question, have you ever eaten, have you ever eaten uh, sushi? You answer, yes, I have, or no, I haven't. Yes, I have, or no, I haven't. Or if you want to give specific information, yes, I have. I ate sushi uh, last year. I ate sushi last year for the first time. Okay, an example. Uh, have you ever, for example, have you ever, alguna vez, right? Alguna vez, as, a. Uh, you ever uh, seen a 
famous person uh, live, like face to face? Have you ever seen a, a, a famous person in person? Yes, no, you can use the reactions. You can do the thumbs up if, you, if the answer is yes. If the answer is no, it can be a, I don't know, a surprise face like no. Chair, but uh, I, this is a, a simple question. Yes, yes simple question. or not? Simple uh, question. Yes, I have. Yeah. No, I haven't. Okay. If you want to okay. answer with specific information to give more details, you can use a simple past. For example, have you ever uh, cried? Have you ever cried for love? And then you are like, yes, I have. I cried last night. You can say, right? I cried I cry last night because uh, my say my boyfriend my girlfriend had a little discussion with me so i would cry what was the discussion about ah, it was because he didn't say goodbye when we finished the call <laughs> she didn't say goodbye when we finished the call so it's something like that right so you can give some extra details if i ask you a question have you ever for example uh, visited another country and you say, ah, oh, yes, I have. I went to Guatemala three three years ago. Okay, so you give some information. It is possible. You can use a simple pass for that. Or if it is negative, for example, no, I haven't. But I would like to visit uh, Peru. No, I haven't, but I would like to visit Peru. So you can give extra information. It is better, it is better uh, to give details because when you're having a conversation with someone, if you give details, if you give more information, not too much, okay, just a little more information, you demonstrate that you are interested in the conversation and the person will have more motivation to continue talking to you. But imagine that you are in, a, in an airport, right? In the, in the air, at the airport and you're waiting for your plane. Um, and you're alone, right? And somebody's close to you and they ask you, hey, where are you going? Um, to the US. Are you going alone? Yes. What do you think the other person is going to think at, at, that, at that time, at that moment? We are not interested. You're not interested. You don't have interest in, in answering or talking to him. You don't want to have a conversation, right? But what happens if you if they ask, hey, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to the US, to California. And you, or what about you, right? Where are you going? I am sure you're going to have a conversation for 30 minutes if you start talking about like that, right? Asking, and well, answering, asking questions related to the same topic, especially if it is traveling, right? People love talking about that. It's like people love talking about food or people love talking about sports. If I talk to my best friend about soccer, for example, and we talk about Aguila, Barcelona, Madrid, whatever, I, or Brazil, Argentina, I'm sure that we're going to talk for one hour with no problem about soccer and the soccer players and the teams and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, in El Salvador, right? So um, that's the point. That's the point. Okay, that when you show interest, when you give a little more information that you are requested, uh, you demonstrate that you want to continue the conversation, okay? Or that you know more about the language. Because maybe uh, if you, I mean, we look like Latinos, right? And you are talking to someone from another country, from the US or from Canada, and they, they have a conversation with you, and you say, yes, no, thank you, bye. Maybe in that moment they think, oh, probably this person doesn't know too much about the language. But if you are like, um, so are you from here? No, I am from El Salvador, uh, specifically from Samuel. And where is that located? Oh, that's located in Central America. Uh, it's right in the middle of South America and, and North America. So below uh, Mexico, you see Guatemala, then it's El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, uh, 
Panama, I mean Costa Rica and Panama. And that's basically the, the division of the two continents. Oh, that's really interesting. So in that moment, the person is going to know that you have enough level of English, enough knowledge of English to keep a conversation, okay? So it's also an opportunity, right? When you're having these uh, short conversations uh, to practice and to show that yourself, right? That you can do it. So uh, that's what I wanted to tell you, okay? That's extra, I know it doesn't have to do with the conversation that you're going to have in this moment, but I think it's something important for your uh, present and future uh, experiences in the, using the language, okay? So keep that in mind, right? Keep that in mind. Of course, it, most people don't like it when you start talking and talking and talking and talking and talking, talking nonstop. For example, let's talk about food. Ah, so hi, where are you buying? Um, buying pupusas. Ah, what is pupusas? Ah, this is something from El Salvador. I love them. You know, I have eaten all kinds of pupusas in different places and people make them in different ways in El Salvador. Uh, they have the pupusas in Honduras and they say that they belong to them, but it's not true. They have their maleas. Uh, but personally, I will tell you that I prefer the, the mixed ones. So they have cheese and pork. Uh -huh. And and also, uh, there are many places where you can buy pupusa in El Salvador, you have a quilt and the plant. Uh, so it, it's like too much, right? So the person will be like, uh, okay, nice. Enjoy your pupusa, bye. So, uh, I mean, I didn't want to know all the history of the pupusa, right? I just wanted to have a conversation. Uh, so keep that in mind, right? Keep a balance also. Little details that can make a, a, a big difference, right? If you speak too much, you can lose the attention. If you speak too little, you can lose the, the attention, right, or the interest. So it's keeping a balance. And ask back, ask back. So you can ask them the same question or a similar question, right? Because if somebody's asking you, hey, uh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I am a carpenter. Oh, that's nice. That's a really hard job, but I think it's really important. Yes. And, and how much money do you make? Okay. Sorry, but that's not a question that I, I want to answer. So you need to think about the question that you're going to ask, right? Um, so it's like that, right? You need to learn those little uh, details in, in the communication with people, especially in another language, right? Where things can change a little bit. So right now we have the, uh, a link in the chat right now. So you are going to go to the breakout rooms to discuss as many questions as possible in six minutes. Okay, have you ever, uh, have you ever gone to a concert? So something important here, if you are going to use another verb or another activity that is not in the questions, is that we need to use the third form of the verbs, the third form. So for example, with the verb go, the second form is went, and the third form is gone. So the correct question is, have you ever gone with the verb eat? Eat is the first form. Uh, let me check. The second form is ate, and the third form is eaten. So you're going to say, have you ever eaten uh, chapulines, uh, for example? So, um, or have you ever eaten pupusas with a fork and a knife in a very fancy way? So um, if you're going to use the verb um, drink, drink, right? So drink, form number one, form number two, drank. And for number three, drunk. Have you ever drunk uh, chicha, for example? Have you ever drunk chicha? So that's uh, how you structure the questions. You use the third form of the verbs, okay? So in the in the breakout rooms, you will have different people, right? So maybe if you don't know how to, how to conjugate one verb, your classmate can help you. I am going to stop by so I can help you too, okay? Uh, I will be like the Chapulín Colorado, right? Appearing when you call me. Um, and here we go. So right now we have 19 participants. I'm going to create six breakout rooms. Uh, that will be enough, I think.
Yeah. Perfect. Let's go. Ready? Questions? Nope. Is everything clear? Like coffee yes, or teacher. like water? Like horchata. Like horchata. Okay, so let's go to the breakout rooms now. Six minutes since the moment that you, everybody enters the room. Okay, accept the invitation, please. Okay, Ruth, uh, Elizabeth, Harbin, Maritza, and Janari. Okay, Harbin, Elizabeth, okay, very good. Harbin, are you there? Can you hear me? Let me see. I'm gonna ask you, have you ever broken a bone? Ouch, that hurts. <laughs> I've never, yeah. I never broken one, but I imagine that it hurts a lot. My left arm, I broke, broke my. For real? Yeah, yes I have. What you were doing when you had the accident? Um, I am, um, no, I was seven years old and I was playing and I fall. Then I broke my arm. <laughs> so when you were a child? Yes, it was really painful. In my case, I never have broken a bone. Have you ever called your boyfriend or by the wrong name? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have. Um, have you ever cheated on an exam? Cheated on an exam, uh huh. You got yeah. copy. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of times. <laughs> ah. Going to. Let me see. <laughs> Teacher, the, are, are you ever is for uh, the verb is in past? For yeah, example, in, the, in the past uh, participle, have you ever drive, uh, driving, driving, driving? Have you ever driven? Driven. Have driven. you ever America. driven a, 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 a truck or a or a bus. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah. Ah, it's like to the question how have you ever went to the concert? Have you ever gone? Gone. Uh, went. Gone. gone. So because we use the third past. form. The past participle. Uh -huh. oh, Correct. Okay. Yeah, I have a I have a trouble with it. I don't I didn't understand, but with this indication I understand. Okay. How, how, to use. how can I share the link? Because I copy, but I don't know how can I. Uh, through the chat? You Do you have the option of the chat or not? I will um, share the... No? Are you ah, from your phone? Yes, I have the option, chat. So you choose uh, Rolando in this case or Maritza and you send the, the chat to him or to her. Yeah, I have, I, mm -hmm. I have, I have a link. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. okay. But I want to back. Yeah, Maritza told me that she has a terrible headache right now. So it's really, she has migraine. So it's a little bit difficult for her to be with the camera on or exposed to the light or to a lot of, to oh, a lot yeah. of noise. Uh -huh. We know, we know the situation. We understand. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah, okay, I will share. 
the okay. did you ever uh, did you ever fall asleep in a bus <laughs> i can't hear you okay sorry my internet is i have a poor connection no okay i will ask you again have okay. you ever fallen asleep and forgotten where you were? And the, for, and I... From the last. If I can, you please repeat the answer, the question. The question. Have I you ever understand. fallen asleep and yes. forgotten? And where you were. Hmm. Um, <laughs> Do you understand the question? <laughs> yes, I understand, but I'm trying to, to, to remind me. And I think, yes, I have I have a full clip and forget where, where am I. Okay, and what happened? What did you do? Uh, turn on, turn on the lights and look around <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, the... a couple of times uh, when I travel uh, for my job, and I'm in a hotel. Suddenly, I wake up and I don't know where am I. Oh my god! <laughs> so mm -hmm. This is we were right. Yes. Okay, have you ever driven a sports car? No, I haven't driven a sport car, but I wish I could once uh, drive a sport car. A sport car. Okay, and have you ever driven a truck? No, I can't. I can't drive. Okay. But mm. I'm trying, I'm thinking I would, I would try to learn because it's so important and I don't want to, I don't want to take a bus because of the coronavirus and I work from home. That's why I don't usually use uh, the public transportation and when I go to visit my mom, I go with my grandpa, but sometimes my grandpa don't, doesn't go to my mom's house. So that's why I need to learn. Yes. Yeah. It's a... Repeat the question. I call, what was I call with, with him every day. <laughs> Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> it's usually that you call uh, in other name to people that, but not girl. I, I never do that. Yes. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Make another question. Teacher. Hello. Have you ever eaten? What? Again, please. Have you ever eaten horse meat? Horse meat. Horse meat. No, I haven't. It's. I have never no, eaten horse me meat. Either. I have eaten. Yeah. Um, oh, well. Uh, I don't know if I should tell you this. But it's alpacas meat. <laughs> Al alpacas meat. Alpaca? What? Yeah. When you when, when you went Peru. to Peru. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah I feel sorry people about say that. that it's too late. That it's that it's common to, to eat in Peru. And I don't know how to say pig pig. I have to tell. Ah, conejo de rabbit. 
No, no, no. In, in Peru, it's it's like a rat or a hamster. Ah, that's but, a cuyo. But bigger. Cuyo. Yeah, cuyo. Like cuyo. They eat in cuyo. They I eat tried that cuyo. too. What? Yes. Oh my God, that, that is a, a giant rat. It's, oh, it's parent, but not exactly the same. Okay. Uh, but it's part of the of the experience. But my mind. Okay. But my uh, mind tell me that it's a giant rat. <laughs> yeah, it's delicious, okay. but it doesn't look so nice. Ooh, okay. I'll okay. Have, I have kids. I just I I will have just one kid, but if I like, so yes, two kids. But I don't know yet. <laughs> Maybe uh, I'm not mother, but I live, well, I visited my aunts and they have one, two kids, and they said, no, I don't want any more one. <laughs> so maybe you're going to change your mind, your future. <laughs> yes, I, I, I don't know, but I, I always remember that my grandmother said, you have to 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 have two kids mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because he he yeah he have a lot of answer about that but she always said you do ha have to have at least two kids but i don't know i hope that i would like to be a mother <laughs> Okay, in my case, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> but okay. yeah, uh, we have to have maybe one, but nowadays in the Okay, guys, uh, I'm sorry, time is up. The conversation Francisco, was. Francisco wants to make a question for you. Oh my goodness, that doesn't sound so good. Tell me, Francisco. Okay. How do you say how do you say garrobo? First of all. Garrobo. Yeah. Well, garrobo is classified as a lizard, right? Uh, ah, lizard. Okay. But for okay, go ahead, Francisco. <laughs> countries, but for people in other countries, they 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 recognize them as iguanas. So they classify oh, okay. them like all of them are like iguanas or big lizards. But okay. uh, yeah, I would say iguanas because they have the idea, right? How it looks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you ever ate it, iguana? Mm -hmm. Iguana? Once. <laughs> I have tried different kinds of food, guys, to be honest with you. I, I am very <laughs> open to trying new things. Uh, if I know that I don't take any risk, right? Like um, something that can be poisonous or that can have side effects. Um, but yeah, I like to try new things um, in food, in drinks, and doing things when I travel, for example. So yeah, I like to try that. In my, in my case, I do that, but when I have to do things when I travel, but no with the food because I, I don't know, I'm too kiki. Too I what? think that it's a word. Kiki, tiki, tiki, tricky. I don't know. <laughs> tiki? I think that it's called like delicada. I thought yeah, tiki. Not, something. It would be picky, ah, okay. probably. Picky Pick. eater. You are a picky eater. Like, give uh, me a hamburger, yeah, yeah. but no tomato, no Yeah, lettuce. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm just like that. I'm just like that. <laughs> okay, so that's a little complicated. Yeah, yeah please, definitely. without without pickles, without without onion, something like that. I, mm -hmm. I just do that. Sorry, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, we all have things that other people might not consider to be so common, but. Teacher, when, uh -huh. when you went to Peru, do you ate? Did you eat? Did you eat um, Cuyo? No. Yes, I did. It. Just a little, a little, let's say sample, a little sample of the Cuyo. 
and also no, alpaca. He told I'm sorry us, about that. He told, <laughs> he told us that he told a, a full cuyo. <laughs> no, no, no. We bought it, but we didn't eat it because it didn't look nice. The taste was good, but the look yeah. was not. And so, as they say, right, sometimes you, the food uh, gets to us through uh, the eyes, but I was and, curious. And did you sometimes take a picture? Uh, I think I took one picture, but I don't know where it is. No. You've broken my heart. The cuyos <laughs> are very pretty. No, I thought you can I can break your heart because I told you that I ate alpaca. That for me that was a difficult decision. And I regret. But, but it's delicious. It was I, good, but I, but I think I, I would I would never do that again. No. So okay. let's go on. You felt, uh, you felt you guilty about that. What? You felt guilty about that. After I came back to the country, yes. <laughs> but in the, in the moment, not too much because it was part you of the experience. You were excited. Right? Uh -huh. I was excited. It's like, like, okay, so <laughs> if I don't do it now, maybe I will never have the chance to do it. So like, nah, okay. Um, it didn't make a big difference, right, for the life of the animal, but um, <laughs> do you have any other questions or comments about these uh, uh, conversations that you had with your classmates? Did you ask a lot of questions? That was, there, was there any question that was really difficult to answer, maybe? <laughs> I have a question that is funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you ever fell down the stairs? The stairs fell, fell down the stairs. Mm, not, not me, but that question is yeah. For me, for a me question it's that funny. Is, uh -huh, for it's me, funny. it's funny because I I fell down a lot of times. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I have I have fallen fallen off uh, a bus and a bicycle, but not the stairs. I am more extreme. <laughs> okay. So, um, the question that was really hard because it's painful is have you ever broken a bone, right? Like that must hurt. I have never broken a bone. Um, I have injured a bone, but not broken. Um, so I, me neither. Flor, you had a question or Beatriz? I don't know. Yes. When it's me, when you, when you answer a question about how you Have ever, you ever la, la, la. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. the answer, the bear in the answer is in in the same, I don't know, the same time. The same tense. Yes. Uh, tense. Yeah, you say, yes, I have, or no, I haven't. So that is the auxiliary verb. Yes, I have, but, or no, I haven't. But the if bear? I mean, for the short answer, we only ha use yes, I have, and no, I haven't. Uh -huh. uh, if you want to give the long answer, we use the same, the same tense. Yes, I have eaten uh, sushi many times. Mm -hmm. Or no, I have never eaten sushi in my life. So mm -hmm. yes, we use that. Or you have the other option that is easier for you. Maybe you say, yes, I have, period. I ate sushi three years ago. You can use mm -hmm. a simple past so you don't complicate too much, right? Uh, or you can say, no, I haven't, but I like, I would like to try sushi. So yeah, there's, there are different ways that you can answer, okay? So if you, if you don't have any other question, I'm going to take the attendance for the second time, right? When I took it the first time, some of you were not here, so. Um, Remember to let me know, right? When you have an inconvenience to join the session or to join the session on time so that I know, okay? I'm informed that about what's happening, right? Because uh, now with people driving and people sick, I, I get worried, right? When my students are usually present and suddenly they are not here. So I'm like, what? What could have happened, right? So Brenda told me that she doesn't have internet connection right now uh, to, to join the session. So that was a problem for her. And uh, well, Beatriz is already here. 
Yes. Uh, Elizabeth. Then we have Mariela. I'm here. Good. Uh, well, Brenda is not here. Carla is not here. Um, Diana. It's not here. So you see. And I have no clue what happened with her. Then we have Flor. I'm here. Francisco. I'm here, teacher. Laura. Present. Marvin. Present, teacher. Jennifer. Present, teacher. Juan Jose. I am here. Karen. Present. Uh, Maritza. Maritza is there, but she's having a little bit of problems with a headache. So uh, Merlin is not here. Then we have Miguel Angel. It's not here. Rolando. I'm here. Ruth. Suleyma. I'm here, teacher. Nice. Janari. I'm here. And then we have uh, Jackie, Blanca. I'm here. I'm here. Very good. And Freddy's. Here. Cool. Thank you so much. Sorry, so, teacher. Ruth is what? here. Are you sure, Ruth? Yes, I'm here. Oh, yeah, see, it's black. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's somebody else talking on the microphone. Aquí estoy. Aquí estoy. Okay, there you are. So you see, there's a difference when we see the people, right? Uh, on camera. Imagine that you are TikTokers or YouTubers, right? Um, and you're broadcasting your, your videos, your clips. So uh, I'm going to, yeah, okay, Anna is working. Then we have the next one. I'm going to share the screen one more time. For you to see the next one okay um so we're going to uh kind of practice it a little bit um uh, while we were dis discussing yesterday probably you didn't remember that we also uh, discuss about how to create work schedule right what is more efficient uh, how to avoid overstaffing or understaffing so which of these strategies do you and your partner consider effective, effective to avoid overstaffing and understaffing? Okay, uh, Ruth, can you please read the number one? Yes, uh, provide a schedule to your employees quickly. Okay, that's the strategy number one. Number two, uh, Freddy's. Uh -huh. Yeah, find a method to communicate quickly with employees. Okay, find a method. Number three, uh, Suleyma. Not sure if you they can use working preferences. Yes, <laughs> they working preference into account. Account. Working preferences. Okay. When they say working preferences, it can be about the schedule. For example, maybe Juan Jose prefers to work at night in the night shift, okay? Uh, because he's a night owl, right? He's like Batman. Uh, but uh, Rolando says like, no, I prefer to work in the morning and sleep all night. So I prefer the morning shift. I am an early bird, okay? So, so take that into consideration, right? Uh, the working preferences. Number four, uh, Volunteer will be floor. The schedule having your employees is strength in mind. Your employees is strength, right? So, strength. okay, Francisco is very good at answering calls. Mm, so I think that I have to have Francisco. 
maybe Pablito is not so good. So if he works with Francisco, he can help him to practice or to improve. And uh, Mariela is really good at, I don't know, uh, answering emails. So I'm going to have her in this team, number one, right? For the morning. So take into consideration, right? Or schedule uh, having your employees strength in mind. Okay, uh, number five. There was a goal. <laughs> Let's see, Laura, please. Allow for change in the schedule. Allow, uh -huh. Allow for, for changes, change. changes in plural, changes change. in the schedule. Okay, so be a little flexible, right? So maybe Blanca can tell me, I'm sorry, Freddie, but I can't work at night this month because I am taking a, a course online to learn English. So it's not possible for me to have to work. Can you please help me to move to the morning shift? Or it's just for this month and does it? And I can, I can work at night later. So allow that opportunity, okay? That's another strategy. Number six, uh, Blanca, now that I mentioned your name, can you please help us out? Prevent. Oh Absent my God, that's... Absentism. <laughs> Absentism. That, that's a hard word. Absentism. Yeah. Using phone reminders. Using phone reminders. Okay, good. Okay, repeat absentism. It's that's that the correct way? pronunciation. Yes, it's uh, that okay, way. Okay, okay. okay using phone reminders. Okay, is your, if you're not so familiar with phone reminders, uh, remember that is one characteristic that the majority of the new phones have, right? So for example, I have the, the reminders of the things that I have to do, okay? I will show an example here. I have all my reminders on the, on the cell phone and I can schedule them uh, with an alarm. So a little alert, right? Uh, that I have to do something uh, like go to work tomorrow, right? At 7 p.m., 7 a.m., sorry. Um, so that can work, okay? Using phone reminders. That's an obligation. Everybody will use them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So please take a screenshot or have your manual ready because you're going to discuss in person, mm -hmm. okay? About a, your, which ones you consider are the best strategies or the most effective strategies? Being effective, right? Effective. Because you can say, oh yes, using the, I don't know, the phone reminders. No, for example, uh, allow for changes in the schedule is effective because people can express their opinions. But what happened if you, if you ask 10 people to work at night and the 10 people don't want to work at night or they can't work at night. So you will never make a schedule, for example. So maybe that strategy is not so effective. So just to give an example, right? What is effective? What works? Okay, that's what you're going to discuss in the breakout rooms. Uh, I'm going to add one more breakout room so we have more people discussing. Uh, what well, less people discussing, so you, you can get to an agreement quickly. Let me check. Okay, one, two, three, and seven, 14, 18. Here we go. I will go with eight breakout rooms. Okay, group number one is complete. Group number two, yes, three, yes, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the number seven, okay. Here we go. So for this activity, you will have just three minutes, guys. So you just have to discuss, express your opinion and get to an agreement about what are the most effective strategies in this from these six. Ready, set, go. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, Jennifer, Ruth, do you get an imitation? Okay, Maritza and Elizabeth. Okay, Jennifer and Ruth, did you get the invitation to join the breakout room or not? Yes, okay, Jennifer. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Let's check. <laughs> so for me, the the better option is to uh, take take working preference into account because if you if you give a, if you give a schedule that the that the people prefer, they are happy and and they will come to work. Okay, but in this case, you can choose more than one, uh, Karen. So it says, which of these strategies? So you can have three or four. Uh -huh. Choose the, the most effective options. ones. It can be two or three, depending on your discussion. Ah, okay. Hello, hello, Blanca. What happened with your partner? I'm forever alone. No, you're not alone. I'm here now. So, uh, okay. Tell me, which of the of the strategies do you consider are more effective or the most effective? I, I think that it's the fun reminder because I forgot about you. Everything. You can choose more than one. Remember. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm going to write that in the in the chat so maybe so they don't get confused that it's just one. Okay. I think ah provide the schedule to your employees quickly. That it's a good one too. Find a method to communicate quickly with the employees. I think that it's it's good to use the social media mm -hmm. like WhatsApp. Yeah. I think. To communicate hey, quickly. Could yeah. be. I think that yeah, using technology is really good. So I'm going to yeah. select the ones that you mentioned. Uh, you said the Prevent. reminders, right? Prevent. Yeah. Your, your favorite word: absent, absentism. Absentism. Uh -huh. And then another one that you select. Um, find a method to communicate quickly with employees. And I choose social medias like WhatsApp, for example. Uh -huh. To communicate quickly. Yeah, because by uh, via email is- The fourth one. The fourth one, it's good too, because I can't, I can put employees that it that have strengths with one thing, but in another in area. I think that mm -hmm. is a good one too. Employees having your special having your employees strength in mind. In mind. In mind. Okay. Yeah. That's excellent. Great. That's it. Okay. Perfect. So we're done. I'm yeah. going to call everybody back. Yeah. So you see, you are very efficient. Yeah, <laughs> I was alone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened with your partner. According to this, oh wait, somebody else is alone too. Okay, hold on, I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Laura lost connection probably. Yes, she's gone. Okay. But you finished discussing some some of them. Yes, we choose we choose uh, three options that we think it can be useful. It's take working preference into account, allow for changes in the schedule, and prevent ab ab ten, uh, absentism. Absentism using the phone reminders. Oh, cool. 
So I'm going, we're going to check if the majority of your classmates agree on the on the ones that you chose because uh, with uh, I was working with Blanca because she was alone too. And uh, we got basically the same ones, I think. So it will be uh, okay. probably we're going to agree in so, the majority of them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, can be. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. See you in a moment. All righty. Okay, so Fast and Furious. Um, from the list that we have, there were six. I would like to hear some uh, representatives from different groups, right? To mention their top three, their top four, their top two, if you think that only two of them are effective. So in the breakout room number one, we have Karen and Laura. Uh, can you please quickly mention the, the ones that you consider the most effective ones? Okay. Yes, we consider the most effective um, taking working preference into account, uh, allow okay. for changes in the schedule and mm -hmm. prevent absenteeism, absenteeism using phone reminders. Okay, so you think that those three are the most effective ones. Okay, thank you so much. Don't forget about the reactions for your classmates, right? Like the claps, the thumbs up, the good job. That's the motivation, right? Because everybody's learning and trying to do their best. So I appreciate every little participation you have, okay? And the questions, I love questions, if they are connected to the language, right? So um, let's continue. Room number two, we have Freddy's and Jennifer. Who is going to share the top three or top four? Well, we just... Go ahead, ahead Freddy. No, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Ladies we first. should <laughs> provide the schedule to your employees as the most important. Uh -huh. And the second one, find a method to communicate quickly with employees. And the third one is schedule having your employees strengths strength in mind. Okay, so the other three that you didn't choose, Karen. So you see, there are some differences here. Excellent, that's good. I love when you have different points of view because that enriches the conversation, right? In the classes. So Francisco and Ruth, you were in the breakout room number three. What can you? What did you choose? Which ones did you choose? Um, I tried. Yep. Sure. Okay. Uh, Ruth and I will talk about uh, the number two and number three. Okay. For example, number two, the uh, finger method to communicate quickly with the employees. Fine. Uh -huh. Fine. Fine method. Yep. Yes, is to import because if you have a good communication with the other co workers, the work is more easy. It's easier. It's easier. Sorry. Easier, okay. So it's really yes. important, okay. It's really important. So you say number two and number three. Yes. yes. Also, they maybe I don't know how do you okay. say this, but maybe it goes hand in hand. <laughs> I don't know. Hand in hand. With... Hand in hand. Yeah, that, that is a good. That's yeah. an idiom. Go hand uh -huh. in hand. Yes. Uh, write <laughs> yes, it down in the with, chat. <laughs> with four schedule having your employees strength in mind. Okay, yeah, so when you say that some things go hand in hand, uh, that means that they have a connection, they have a relation, right? They are linked. So uh, that would be the number four. Thank you so much. Uh, Beatriz and Mariela, the two, two of the Annas, what do you have? What did you choose? What do you think about these well, different strategies? We talk with Mariela and we uh, we both are agree. We Preven both agree. We both agree. Even uh -huh. accents using phone reminder is the best one. Okay. But uh, we consider uh, you you had to take you had to take the 
the work, working preference into account too. That's correct. Okay, so those two. Thank you so much, uh, Beatriz. Floor and, no, wait. Juan Jose and Suleyma, you were in the room number five. Yes, teacher. Okay, what do you uh, have? Which is one of, uh, one of them is the number two, find a method to communicate quickly with employees uh, because we think that is the best method to, to have all the things organized if we are going to have uh, overstaffing. And mm -hmm. the second one is the last one, number six, prevent absent. I don't know how Absentism. to. Absentism. <laughs> Absentism. Using phone reminding. And at number five could be the other one to allow for changes in, in the schedule. schedule. Okay, perfect. Uh, room number seven, we have. Let me check. Who was that? No, room number six, we have, we have Flora and Rolando, right? Well, no. we suppose we suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the number one for us is the number three. Take okay. working preference into account. Yeah, it's uh, the number two is the number one. Provide okay. a schedule to your employees quickly. And the number three is the number two. Find a method to communicate quickly with employees. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Rolando. Uh, room Welcome. seven, we have Jackie, Maritza, and Janari. Which ones did you choose? Okay. We choose. Uh-huh. Continue, Janari. Okay, I don't know if you hear me well, but yes. we choose number two, find a method to communicate quickly with employees. And number two, schedule having your employees straight in mind. And number three, prevent absenting absent absent using phone reminder. But okay, we have, we uh -huh. think the number three is more personal. Okay, it's more personal. Is the strategy more personal that, that our boss say you can use the phone, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So uh, absenteeism, okay? This is for everybody because I see that you're having problems with that word. So it's okay. Don't worry. It's a, it's a sound that we don't use in Spanish, first of all. So for that reason, we need to practice it, right? Whenever you see a new word that is difficult to pronounce or a new sound that is difficult to pronounce, you need to start practicing, right? Uh, and then you can use the word in different contexts, in different examples. So absenteeism, or when you have the ISM, like uh, racism, right? Uh, so it's the sound, ism, right? Ism at the end of the, of the words. So uh, absenteeism. So the word is absentee, right? Uh, absentism is the noun, okay? El absentismo, right? Absentism. Eh, it's like if you say evangelism or criticism, right? So there are many, many words that, that you can use with that sound. So um, the last but not least, I think we have... Uh, Elizabeth and Blanca. Well, in this case, we have Blanca and me at the end. Yeah, I was alone. Okay, the star are mine. No, the star doesn't mind. Well, Only the three that some I, of them. The, uh -huh. That that I I think that it's important. The first one, it's to find a method to communicate quickly with employees. And I think uh -huh. that it's a, it, uh, it's a social media, just like uh, I was told to the teacher, like WhatsApp, I think, 
The second one, I think it's prevent absenteeism. 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 Yeah, using phone reminders. And the third one is, I, ah, the schedule have been your employees' strength in mind. In mind, okay, excellent. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this beautiful, um, let's say chart, okay, or bo of voting results. One, two, three, okay, got it. So uh, I'm going to paste it somewhere here. Wait a second, I need the pointer. Okay, the mouse is here. And I'm going to stick that here, okay? So that will be the, the, the screenshot. And we continue with the next one. So that's all for the discussion. Thank you and congratulations. I, I noticed that everybody had clear ideas about which ones you consider are more effective and the reasons why, right? So we're going to move on with the next, uh, wait a second to clear all the drawings. So that's the, the screenshot. My that face is funny. <laughs> uh, you should see my face in the screenshots that I have seen when students are sharing in the breakout rooms. We have a lot of yeah. screens that, that when you have the close eye, have, have uh, the mouth in the to other a side, way. Uh -huh, looking funny. like, like yeah, yes yeah. <laughs> and you're like yeah okay like that yeah i know it's funny but i get used to that so don't worry yeah. now we're going to continue with monitoring personnel and that is a unit right number three so what you're going to do now is that you will be able to give advice okay on tips to monitor personnel and improve workplace operations so um questions we have two questions uh, let me see, I'm going to ask Jackie to read the question, the two questions, please, quickly. Okay, the two questions. Um, how are employees monitored at the company? What kind of documentation is used in your company to make sure employees are doing a good job? Mm -hmm. So those are really two good questions, okay? Really good two questions that you're going to answer. Uh, well, so that's what you're going to do. You're going to discuss uh, how the employees are monitored at your company. Like, do they have a camera? Do they have a drone? Do they have a security guard in every door? Uh, do you have a personalized supervisor just for you? So, um, what are they controlling your computer? How do they monitor your 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 work? Uh, and what kind of documentation? What kind of documents? What kind of forms? What kind of um, papers they use to make sure that employees are doing a good job? Okay, that is it. those are the two questions. You're going to have a lot of things to share, but I'm going to create the breakout rooms a little bit bigger so that you can listen to other opinions, other jobs, right? Uh, people who work in different areas or in different companies. So I'm going to create just five. Um, no, I want to create four more controversy. So four breakout rooms. One, two, three, four. Perfect. So here we go. You will have four minutes. Well, no, it's a lot of people. So that would be five six minutes maximum to discuss these two questions okay go straight to the point give your answers and the next person goes next okay quickly no matter who starts who continues or who finishes do it spontaneously ready set go
Thank you. Would you like to start, Flo? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Where is Mario? <laughs> He's late for his tea. Wait a second. Why are you practicing the conversation? <laughs> uh, hey, what, what, what I have to do? <laughs> exercise one. Discuss the two questions. You see that ah, what happens course. because you are okay. because you are in love. Uh huh. So it happens. Okay. It happens. Good luck. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> the employees are taking uh if they are doing a good job if they are not doing fraud. Um, if they are selling the things very well, they have to to write down all the things that are happening in the call and they post it and everyone can see it. And as well, me as a coach, I have to listen the calls and check what happened, what, why they are not selling. So I think that that, that is the way oh, how my company so monitor it. The uh-huh so monitor you can say monitor pronounce the t like an r monitor uh um, it sounds like a little stressing job right to be listening to calls and supervising the the chats and etc 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 it's really 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 stressing <laughs> It's stressing, yeah. Because I have to be multitasking. I have to do yeah. a lot of things at the same time because someone is as me, coach, I don't understand what my computer is uh, happening with this. Coach, uh, what, I, what I have to do in this call, coach, the, the mm. customer is telling me this and I have to listen calls. I, I have to open doors. I have to do a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, and okay. they create the program helping me with that <laughs> yeah okay perfect go ahead you still have four minutes yes. so at the fun um every hour of the day and we just have one hour to uh, for lunch in this hour you can be absent but in the rest of the day you cannot no. well um um, about, about the, the documentation. About the documentation, as I told you before. Thing. In Ben another thing. <laughs> uh, we have a talking uh, in the intro in, in the um, intro in the office. Oh, yeah, in the office, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Is the first thing we have to do is the. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, in my case, we have a uh, we have cameras too in a strategic point, and but maybe we are more relaxed because that is the only way to control uh, what the to people control. are doing, and, mm -hmm. and it's not in 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 all places. In all places, it's just in some points. And so you you know where you can go, and the camera won't see you. Yeah, and we have some supervisors that they are making some rounds uh, and checking what people are doing, but maybe twice in, in a whole in a whole day. So okay. and people it's working good. <laughs> <laughs> At least we think people is is working good. Okay. People How are work? people How are. All right. Knowing yeah. how do you work? How do you work? Knowing that have cameras controlling around. And what kind of documentation is used in your company to make sure employees are doing a good job? This is a, a yes. document. Uh, okay, example, sorry, Juan Jose asked a question like, how do you feel when you when you know that you're working uh, and the cameras are watching you? How do you feel? Because he had he doesn't have that experience, right? At work. No, uh -huh. he, yes, he has. <laughs> no, but how he do does. you feel? 
Mm, uncomfortable. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'm really sorry. Don't worry. <laughs> Be happy. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And Freddy, would you like to share or? Our employees monitor in my company where I work at. We're monitored by the community. So actually where I work at, most of the community is like unexpected, unexpected to see if we're working or we're not working. So if we're not working right, so they, they go to our boss and tell them, hey, he ain't working today or he's not doing his job right. So. And what kind of document documents documentation is issued in your company to make sure employees are doing a good job? Actually, we use a procedures like in every company, and we have a, a worksheet. Like if I'm repairing something, I have to fill out the worksheet, and the user has to have to sign it that I finished the work, that I did it right, I didn't have any mistake, the pipes ain't leaking, and have to write the materials I use. And let me see what else. I have to send it to my boss, take pictures of what I have done. Send it through WhatsApp. What else? Actually, we're only two employees. <laughs> really? Just, yeah, just me and my <laughs> co-worker partner that he's, he's the one that, well, he pr probably he's like a secretary and at the same time, he's a cashier. So people go and pay the water bills where I work at. So it's like we work for a community. Ah, oh, okay, okay. That's why my, my working time is like <laughs> from five to seven. Got it. All right. Monami, it's time to continue. Um, we're going to uh, go directly to the, to the conversation. Uh, we're not going to share too much about what you were discussing, okay, due to time, because time's money. In this case, time is also learning. So I don't want you to miss any of that. So I'm going to share the screen and so that we can go on to the conversation, right? So as we are running out of time, okay, uh, we're going to just have a couple of practice today and uh, we're going to do the practice that we did the last time that you sent me the recording with the conversation through WhatsApp, right? So you record your voice, uh, performing the conversation alone, you by yourself. Right, so Freddy and Emilio, uh, Rolando and Antonio, right? So <laughs> um, that's what you're going to do. And um, pronunciation, right? You're going to listen and repeat after me. Where's Mario? Where's Mario? He's late for his shift. He's late for his shift. He's late for his shift. You can connect the, the sound, right? Instead of saying he is, you can say he's. He's late for his shift. He's like if you have apostrophe S, right? He's late for his shift. Okay, next one. Mario, goodness. 
You repeat that, right? Goodness, that's like, oh my God, right? Or, oh my gosh, or gosh. Uh, I got a call that he's very sick. I got a call that he's very sick. I should have told you earlier. I should have, okay? So you make a, a, a combination of sounds, should have. So the, the H, you don't pronounce it, and you say should have, right? The should, you pronounce it as an R at the end, should have, should have. So I should have told you earlier. I should have told you earlier. Told you, right? Told you or told ya, right? I should have told you earlier. So uh, that's the way that people speak the language naturally, right? I should have told you earlier about that. I should have told you earlier. Told ya, right? I should have, should have told you earlier about that. So um, don't worry. He should have called me directly. He should have should have called me directly. He should have called me directly. So it's like uh, different stages, right? At the beginning you say, he should have called me directly. So you pay attention to the pronunciation and you familiarize with the words. Then you say it a little bit faster and you say, he should have called me yes, uh, directly, right? He should have called me directly. So that would be the last one. He should have called me directly. When you say it more, um, let's say spontaneously, or you say it faster, right? He should have called me directly. He should have called me directly. If he had called me, if he had called to my phone, if he had called to my phone, if he had called to my phone, I could have found a substitute by now. I could have, could have, okay, again, we pronounce the D as, a, as an R, and we connect it with have. Right, instead of have, we say have, could have, could have. I could have found a substitute by now, substitute by now, okay? And the last one, I have time this afternoon. Let me cover for him. I have time this afternoon, let me cover for him. So in this case, there is another link sound that you can make uh, when you use him or her or uh, them. Uh, you eliminate the first letter. For example, you say for, for him, right? Let me cover for him, for him, right? Let me cover for him. So the people tend to omit that letter or that sound. And then instead of saying, uh, tell her, they say, hey, tell her, tell her, tell her that I love her, love her, love her. It's not I love her. Dile que la amo, right? Dile que la quiero. Tell her that I love her, tell her that I love her. So that's, those are little details about the language that you have to pay attention when you're listening to native speakers, for example, if you're watching a movie or videos in English and the people are from other countries, right? From the US, from Canada, from England, pay attention how they use the language because in the real life, that's the way they will talk to you on the phone, in person, at the airport, in another country. So here in El Salvador, so you need to get, get familiarized with that, right? Because yes, we learn the language in one way, but sometimes there are little things that we need to change or to adapt depending on the context and the people that we're talking to. So uh, sometimes it's formal, sometimes it's a little casual, sometimes it's more informal, right? So you just adapt, okay? And uh, it's like in Spanish. Sometimes you say, que onda? Sometimes you say, que hay? Sometimes you say, Qué tal, cómo está. So you oh, adapt oh. to that, right? Uh huh. Uh, and like that. So I need two volunteers right now for this conversation. Two, two volunteers. Beatrice and Jennifer. Okay, so we have two volunteers, and then in the next conversation will be Blanca with somebody else. Uh huh. Question. Uh, and Francisco. Okay. It's substitute. like that. Substitute. 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 I'm going to. Uh, substitute. I think I'm going to share the link with you uh, substitute. for the Youglish. And it's not propaganda, right? So it's like a YouTube and English combination, like a dictionary. You can uh, look for any word and automatically you're going to get thousands and hundreds of videos from YouTube where people use that word in a conversation, in a conference, 
So that can be a really good source of uh, information for you. Like, I don't understand the dictionary. I'm going to Juglish and I listen to people pronouncing the word. Okay. So I'm going to give you the link with the pronunciation of the word. Okay, for some reason I cannot hear that right now, but I'm going to move on and share this information through the chat, right? So you can check the link later. Okay. Um, sometimes, sometimes some words have different pronunciations, like it's possible to have two or three different pronunciations, depending sometimes on the country, because in the UK, for example, they say schedule. In the USA, in America, we understand schedule. Okay, in the US, schedule. In Canada, they probably say schedule. But in England, in other parts of the, uh, Europe, and maybe Asia or Africa or Oceania, I don't know, they have this uh, pronunciation schedule because they speak that with that accent. So they learn that it's not water, it's they say water, right? So, um, Sometimes it's not that you are wrong, it's that there is another option, another variation, like behind. I like behind the word, the pronunciation of the word behind, but behind is another possibility. So a lot of people say behind, but some others prefer to say behind. Sometimes both are okay. They use them in different parts of the US and it's okay, it's all right. So um, let's move on. Beatriz, you will be kitchen man, the kitchen manager, and let me see who was your partner. I forget who was the second person who raised a hand. Jennifer, I think. Jennifer, okay, so Jennifer and Beatriz. Jennifer, you will be Mary. Ready, set, and go. Where's Mario? He's late for his shift. Mario, goodness, I got called that he's very sick. I should have told you earlier. <laughs> don't worry. Uh -huh. He don't worry. He should have called me directly. If he Good had that. called to my phone, uh -huh. I could add phone a substitute by now. We have time this afternoon. Let me cover for him. Let me cover for him. Very good. Excellent. So I, I suppose this vocabulary is going to be very useful for you, right? Because it happens at work. Somebody's sick or calls in sick and you have to find a substitute or you have to cover uh, someone, right? Cover for, for someone. Uh, thank you so much. Don't forget about the reactions. Now we continue with Blanca and Francisco. Uh, Blanca, you can start the conversation and then Francisco, you continue. Okay. Where is Mario? He is late for his shift. Mario? Goodness. I got a call that he is very sick. I to have to your earlier. Don't worry. He should. He should have called me directly. If directly. he had called directly. If he had called to my phone, I could have found a substitute by now. Substitute. I, I have time for, now. I have time this afternoon. Let me cover for him. Let me cover for him, for him, right? That's correct. Thank you so much, guys. I love it. So. That's the conversation that you're going to practice. Record it with yourself and write and just send it to me, okay? So I can listen to your beautiful voices during the day. And um, let me check. So in that way, everybody's going to practice, okay? So don't forget to send me the message with the recording. It's a very short conversation, so you shouldn't have any problem with that. So don't forget, right? The way to connect the sounds or to link the sounds in this case is should have. Should have or could have right, could have or should have. You need to add 
the imaginary R, okay, instead of the letter D. So you say should have, and you say could have, could have, but the R, like the gringo R, right? It's not could have, you know, it's could have, right? Or should have, it's not should have, right? Uh, so you need right. to make the, the sound a little more sophisticated, right? Should have, I should have called you, right? He should have called me. I could have found, uh -huh, I could have found substitute, substitute, okay? Substitute, substitute, that's correct. Should have, like if, I'm, I, I mean, if you copy that in your notebook, it would be like, like that, I wrote it in the chat right now. Uh, if if it is my notebook, I would do it like that. Shoot up, right? And the other one is could have, right? I could have told you. Yeah. Could have found. Could have. Uh -huh. Yeah. What him, right? Um, Better. I'm going to write down the other one that I mentioned when you say let him or let her um, with, with the R in, in English, right? Letter uh, for him or tell him, right? For example, tell him. Instead of saying tell him and you want to sound more like a native speaker, right? Like if you are a, a, a US citizen. Uh, tell him, tell him. Yeah, that will be telling. So, let her, let her go. Have you heard that song, right? Let her go, let her go by passenger. So they say let her, and you let her go, right? They say, they don't say let her, they say let her, let her go. Uh, tell him, tell him. Hey, tell him my name, tell him my, uh, my message, right? Uh, give him, if you want to say, Dale mi numero. Uh -huh. You say given, given, or dales, right? Dales a ellos, given. Uh, so the pronunciation would be like, uh, wait a second. Okay, Suleyma, you have a question? A comment, a doubt. Tell me. And that was about the phone, <laughs> the sun. <laughs> Sorry. Uh huh. Passenger, uh, let her go. It's let really her go. Nice. It's really beautiful. That sun. Yeah, yeah. it's a little sad, yeah, but yes. In the <laughs> in, in the world, yeah. yeah, that kind that kind of music is <laughs> very good the, to practice English. Pronounced. Yeah, if you ask me, that's the kind of music uh -huh, that you can yeah, listen yeah. to it, from the the present music, right? Ed Sheeran, uh, Passenger, um, I don't know, uh, Sam Adams, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that kind of music is good. Adele, that's beautiful. Uh, so they have clear voices, good pronunciation. The lyrics are good. So yeah, you can practice with those. Okay. Um, so the next one, look at the conversation and complete the statements. Uh, so for number one, what is a compliment? I should have told you. Should have told you. Should have told you. Yeah. Should have told. Okay. Should have told you. I'm going to do it in another area. Sorry. So I'm going to write it right here. Should should have told. Okay, that's number one. Number two? He should have called me directly. Correct. So I'm going to write number two. Well, right here. Should have told me or called me. Call me, right? Call me. Call me directly. Okay. Call. Correct. Call. Should have called call me. Yeah. And the last one? If he had could have found, 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 very good. 
Those are my students. <laughs> Could have found a sub. How do you pronounce substituto? Substitute. Substitute. That's Substitute. correct. Substitute. So if you write it, like way that you listen to me or to somebody else pronouncing the word, right? A native speaker, for example. Substitute. Okay. How can I take notes about that? And you repeat it right in your mind. Substitute. I think it's like that. Substitute. So you write it down, probably it will be like that in your notebook, right? Substitute, substitute. Okay, so let's continue. Um, you put the little stress mark or tilde in the vowel, right? That has the, stre the stress, because in that way you remember that it's substitute. It's not substitute or substitute or substitute, right? So no, so it's a good reference, okay, the tilde. So that can help you when you study, when you practice, okay? When you take notes. So let's go on. Any questions about this? No, the conversation, pronunciation, vocabulary, linking sounds, yes. everything's okay. Just one thing, just one thing. Um, uh -huh. When you pronounce My goodness, directly or, uh -huh. or directly, uh, where is the accent? Uh, well, I say directly, but some people say directly. So you can say direct or direct. Both are correct. Okay. So, okay. Uh, but the stress is in the second one, directly or directly. Direct. There, there is a stress. Thank you. You're welcome. It's $1 per question. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason why some people don't ask questions because they think that I charge money for the questions. <laughs> so no that was good that's that's a joke that i have when my students ask me thank you teacher no no thank you give me one quarter okay so um but it's not true if i if, if i did it i would have a lot of money but no. <laughs> you you say your students a quarter and you told me a dollar yeah because they don't work the students that i'm telling you they don't work so they just get the allowance but you work so you have more money me neither. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I work with I work with high school students, so you can imagine the difference, right? Um, now, anyways, um, there are some questions here about pair work that we're going to do tomorrow. Okay, uh, as a beginner of the class, as, as an intro of the class, right? The exercise number four. Uh, we didn't have time to do a lot of well, some of the things that I have prepared for you, so. Just to give you a, a heads up, right? An anticipation of what we're going to be doing that we didn't do it today because of time. Ten, 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 ten. We have a trivia Thursday. So study general knowledge questions. I'm going to be asking you a question for everybody tomorrow. So, or two questions, depending on how fast we go, Yay. right? So. Trivia Thursday will become Trivia Friday or something like that. So, uh, and the explanation, right? You can study. This is something that I did when I was a student. I used to study the lessons before, before the class. So this helped me to anticipate what, what was coming. So in the class, I didn't have to start from zero, right? I, I was like, I have an idea. So I'm just going to clarify with the teacher in the class. And if possible, I completed the exercises. Uh, because I have unit one, two, three, just grammar. And I did it like that. So I tried to do one unit more to test myself, right? How much I could do by myself to become more independent and in the class to pay more attention to check if I was right or not, right? So that was something that I used to do. Not always, but frequently. Now, uh, quickly, I'm just going to call out your names uh, to check that you are here or that you, only your body is there, but your mind is not. <laughs> Let me check. Um, I'm going to move this quickly. Sorry that I took a little bit I more time with, than I should. Let's start with Freddy's. Freddy's, are you there? I'm here. Ah, good. If you don't answer in three seconds, absent. Okay, Blanca? I'm here. One, two, <laughs> three. Okay, Jackie? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Jackie, we lost her. 
Oh, I'm here. I'm here, mm -hmm. teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay, Yanari. One, two, I'm three. Here. Good, Salema. One, two, <laughs> and three. I'm here. Okay, Ruth. <laughs> One, two, three. Rolando, I'm here. three, two, one. Okay, there you go. Miguel Angel is not here. Merlin is not here. Maritza. Uh, I think I she's... Excellent. Thank you for staying. Not too late. I'm just kidding. Uh, Karen. Present. One, two. Okay, that was fast. Juan Jose. I'm here. One, two, three. Okay, Speedy Gonzalez. Jennifer. One, Present. two, three. Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, let me check. Harbin. One, two, three. I think we lost Harbin during the during the session. Okay, Ruth is here in the chat. Okay, then we continue with Glenda, Laura. We lost connection with Glenda too. I remember. Uh, Francisco. Pleasant teacher. Floor. I'm here. One, two, three. Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're faster than me. Mariela? Present. Elizabeth? I'm here. Beatriz? I'm here. Teacher? Here. Okay, so perfect. Emilio. We're complete. Emilia is here. Okay. So uh, wait a second, wait a second. The time is up. Don't forget, tomorrow we're taking the group picture for, for the week. So take a shower get a hearse a hairdo that you like put on your favorite shirt your favorite blouse dress smoking tuxedo whatever you want okay so we're having the picture the group picture now um before i forget i i also want to remind you right um well maritza is not feeling well right now so i'm going to check who's the other person in the who's the next person in the list Wait a second, I have like a million windows, uh, tabs here open. Uh, by chat, stop sharing, just focus on the list. And the next person after Maritza is Carla. Carla is not here, Francisco <laughs> was with me yesterday. And the next one is Juan Jose. Juan Jose, can you stay for the 10 minutes? Well, it's about seven minutes because it's late. Yeah, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, guys, if you don't have any questions, thank you so much for uh, dealing with me one more night. It was a pleasure to see you and to hear you. Uh, it was a pleasure too. Take care of yourself. God bless you all, and hope to see you tomorrow. Okay. Drive safely. Thank Good you. Night. Okay. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye. -bye. Good night. Sweet Good night. dreams. Nice background, Francisco. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Night, night. Nighty night. Okay, Freddie, see you tomorrow. Au revoir. So, Mr. Avalos Campos. Hi. <laughs> you look like if you are one of those uh, TV hosts or radio hosts. Now I remember. <laughs> I remember who you remind me of. He's a famous Salvadorian presenter. I think it's Willie Maldonado. <laughs> Yeah, that is um, a, the style, the profile that I see in you. Like, you are <laughs> a very formal, uh -huh. and, and, and let's say, and funny person. <laughs> okay. So, do you tell think that me. you love me? I know you. <laughs> Yeah, but in other, in other, uh, in another context, in other... mm, yes? I'm not sure to be honest with you. It seems like you're familiar to me, but I'm not sure from where because, yeah, I don't know. I was taking um, some subjects at UFG, but online for the master's degree in uh, virtual learning. Um, 
but I'm not sure. That's the only connection that I have with the university. <laughs> uh -huh. Maybe in a Congress, in a conference in San Salvador. Who knows? Who knows? Could be. Could be. Yeah. So I, I got you uh, unexpectedly, right? Out of the blue uh, to stay for the 10 minutes. Well, the, the time that is missing, it's just about five minutes more. Uh, but I would like to know if there is something that you have doubts about or something that I can help you with. Um, yeah, maybe. I, I think my, that my problem it is when someone speak fast. Um, uh, I have a problem with contraction. When the sentences uh, have a contraction, I feel that I uh, have a problem with the contraction. Uh -huh. um, when, the, when the people have um, um, many years like me, <laughs> near from the 60 years old um many sound it is lost you lost the sound uh, when you are so uh, old <laughs> like me uh -huh. but i try i try, I try okay I try well remember that uh, when you're have when you're learning a language obviously it's a process and something that you also have to keep in mind is that uh, in a conversation or in a, any scenario where you're going to use the language, it's an adaptation. I mean, you adapt to the person and the other person has to adapt to you, okay? Uh, nobody's going to impose, like, oh, if you don't understand me, I'm sorry. No, I mean, like, I understand you, but if you speak very fast, it's difficult for me to, to understand everything. I get the idea, but I don't understand everything. So that is something that, uh, you you could you could tell someone right in case you have that experience uh, in a conversation like hey hi uh, I am I am learning English I am a, a, a student uh, and I would like to practice with you so uh, the only thing is that for me you need to speak a little slowly because um, I am learning I am adapting to to speaking fast or to listening to people speak fast. So would you like to try? And the biggest possibility is that people will tell you, yes, sure, no problem. Because uh, the benefit that you have is that you are a learner. So people from other countries, they know that it is more difficult to learn their language. And for them, it's difficult to speak Spanish, for example. So uh, you have that, that advantage, right? Or you have that comparison, like, Okay, they will understand you because they know that it's difficult to learn another language, especially Spanish that can be very confusing. Um, and so what you can do is to start listening to more things in English every day. Like when you're driving, you can be listening to podcasts. That it, The podcasts are really good. I will share one website where you can listen to them. You can find podcasts on YouTube, right? And you can download the, the, the videos, etc. cetera. Uh, but if not, you can go to English podcast. Or it's podcast in English, I think. Give me a second. Uh, well, there is one link here that I will share with you through the chat or maybe through the WhatsApp group so everybody can have access to that link. Okay, I'm going to share that in the group. So that's one uh, general English podcast. So it's random. Uh, the other website that I really like for podcasts is podcastinenglish.com. That, that's another one that you can use. Okay, so start listen expose expose yourself more to listening to 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 listening to English especially native speakers, right? Maybe you can start by listening to a radio show or uh, somebody uh, making a tutorial video, right? A tutorial video, how to play the guitar, how to cook a specific recipe 
or how to learn to, to use a computer or a program, a computer program. So, because they explain carefully with indications, so it's not too difficult. But that's at the beginning, right? But later, uh, you can go and try to listen to other kind of, uh, uh, let's say, content. For example, a documentary in English or an interview that is very fast, right? A, a talk show. Um, you can listen to the news that is more advanced, right? It's faster. Uh, CNN, right? Or BBC. So um, you can go little by little. And what you can do also is to use subtitles at the beginning, subtitles in English. Okay, so maybe you didn't listen well, but you saw the subtitle and you understood. Ah, okay, so you can pause, you can repeat, you can go back some seconds and listen again. Okay, so you try to pay attention how they use the language and then you try to imitate that. So it's like a training. When you go to a gym at the beginning, it's very difficult. But if you are perseverant, right? If you are constant, you get stronger. So it's the same thing for the ear, for the for the mouth, right? For the tongue, we need to exercise them. The more you listen, yeah. the more you understand. If you watch a video I, I one time, you understand something. If you watch a video two times, you understand more. If you watch a video three times, you understand more. So repetition can work, okay? But the most important is that you get accustomed to listening to things English in English regularly, not just in the class, mm -hmm. for example. So maybe you can uh, yeah. dedicate 10 minutes every day to listen to, to watch a video or a YouTube channel uh, in English. So it can help you. Yeah, I, I feel that I have improved a little uh, in this um, class, in this module, because, um, for example, I understand uh, a little uh, than the before the school, uh, before course. Um, I understand, I understand a lot. Uh, but my problem, uh, it is big, is um, I have a um, schedule for, for job very difficult. I work since uh, uh, six, um, six and twenty minutes. Uh, start to to class uh, after um, eight to six thirty. Uh, working uh, in administration activities and after six city uh, six city and eight to tonight. I have a, another class. And after wow. I have to start this class, uh, I I have I don't have to, to I don't have time for mm -hmm. to uh, continue practicing. Um, at, at at noon I try I try, but sometimes I feel uh, tired. Very tired. Yeah, yeah, um, it's true. It's it's normal. It's normal. Um, yeah. For example, my 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 daughter, the, my three daughters, uh, they uh, speak English very well. The three. Okay. Uh, my my youngest daughter uh, work in um, a work um, in in these places that uh, controlling call centers. People in in call center. Yes, she she work in call center. My second daughter. I speak English very well, very well. And my um, oldest, um, she works in um, a high port and speak English very well. Um, wow. When when I when I have to travel to USA, uh, they speak English very well with everybody. Mm -hmm. But I feel that I need it to, to to practice it more. Okay, but you can do it little by little. Okay, maybe when you're driving, you can start listening to music in English, like the Beatles or something like you, music that can be relaxing, right? So if you don't know the lyrics, you can try to learn the lyrics. It's not something very difficult. I, 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 I like music of 70s. Uh -huh, the 70s, the 80s is really good music in English, like Air Supply and things like that, right? 
So what I'm telling you is that maybe in this moment it's a little bit difficult for you because you have a very tight schedule, but you can find a way to be a little bit exposed. Maybe when you're having lunch, you can watch a video for three minutes. Yeah, something simple, right? Even if it is little, even if it is little, but you know that little by little, yes, you learn. Uh -huh. yes. It's something is yes. better than nothing, as they say, right? Something is better than nothing. It's necessary uh, to have a discipline uh, for you. Yes, to, to yeah, yeah. But, but you will do it. I, I know that you will do it because you are a teacher, so you know the process, right? Okay, okay. Okay, Juan Jose, it was a pleasure to see you. Uh, thank you so much for staying and I hope to see you tomorrow, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. Thank okay, you. you're welcome and take care, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.